first date I had with my wife, I had never seen her before. We'd only spoken on the phone for about 20 minutes. When I knocked on her door, I was so nervous. When she answered it, I felt relieved, because you never know what you're gonna get on a blind date. <laughs> we drove to DC and we spent hours talking. I felt that I truly found my soulmate. I had never felt connected to anyone as much as I had felt connected to my wife. I love my wife's lively personality and her free spirit. And she was attracted to my groundedness and my clear spiritual path. We had an idyllic courting, engagement, and wedding. After we got married, we moved into a yellow cottage on a cul-de-sac. It felt like a page out of a fairy tale. It felt like we truly honored the biblical injunction of al kain yazov ish es aviv esimo. Therefore, man should, a man should leave his father and his mother, bedavak biisho, and shall cleave to his wife, v'hayu l'basar echad, and they should be one flesh. Soon into our marriage, we started experiencing tension about little things that became big issues, like the time when I asked my wife to make a kugel for Shabbos. But not just a kugel, a kugel in a round pan. I thought it was a simple request in line with the traditional custom. From my wife's perspective, though, not only was I asking her to make a kugel, but I was dictating the shape of the pan. <laughs> she experienced me as a controlling man telling her what to do. <laughs> or at our Friday night Shabbos meal, after the soup, my wife disappeared to the couch. When I asked her to come back and join me and keep me company, she felt pressured. I felt alone. As these squabbles began to occur with greater frequency, we both felt hurt, confused, and scared. What had happened to our relationship? I do have a confession to make. You know the story I just told you about our idyllic courtship? Well, it wasn't completely true. <laughs> well, the positive feelings that we did experience were true. The conflict and the tension that we would later face didn't exactly come out of left field. We actually had seen the seeds of this before when we were dating, but we made excuses or we even liked these things about each other. That's what happens in the romantic stage. We're so blinded by love that we don't see things clearly. I love my wife's free spirit, so I didn't really anticipate that it would manifest itself in a way that I'd find so challenging. And while she was attracted to my clear spiritual path, some of my religious customs began to feel rigid and suffocating. As we seemed locked in a power struggle, I began to ask myself, if I had known all this before, shouldn't I have known better? Did I make a mistake? Would I have had these issues if I had married someone else? Maybe it's time to look for someone else. This is definitely not what I signed up for. How could it be that the very things that we loved about each other were now tearing our marriage apart? So it turns out that the Torah has a possible solution to this question. When God created man, he said, Lo tov adam levado. It is not good for man to be alone. Ese lo ezer kenegdo. I will make for him an ezer kenegdo, literally a helpmate against him. Seems like a contradiction. How can you help someone if you're against them? So we see that the purpose of relationships of having a companion as opposed to living alone is to be a helpmate against the other. As paradoxical as it may seem, it's the actual opposition in the relationship that serves to help the other. And without that opposition, we wouldn't have an impetus to grow or to change. So here's how it works. I had my ideals, yet I needed to learn to be a little bit more flexible and to realize what's really important in life. Arguing about the shape of a kugel wasn't one of them. And while my wife's free spirit was great, you know, I really love that about her, when she wasn't able to sit at the table for more than 20 minutes, it served neither of us well. These are just two examples of the many areas in our lives we both could have used to work on. If we hadn't faced them in our own marriage, we may not have had the opportunity to address them and deal with them. So the conflict that we experienced together, it wasn't random. It was tailor-made to address the issues that we both needed to work on, to grow and to become more complete people. 
What do I mean by tailor-made? There was another deeper level to the sensitivity that we needed to show each other that we'll get to in a moment. But the bottom line is that the power struggle was no longer a reason to call it quits or to question our relationship, but it was actually the proof that we married the person who we needed to to address our own personal lackings and to become whole and complete. This relationship dynamic is really the story of the relationship between God and the Jewish people. God redeemed us so quickly that we didn't have time for the bread to rise. We didn't think about the journey ahead, about what we needed to pack, where we were going. We blindly followed God on an exciting new adventure. Yet, only a few days later, we started complaining about the food, <laughs> how we had no water, and how maybe things would have been better if we never left in the first place. Now, we could have seen all this coming, but we were so blinded by the revelation of God's presence that we didn't even take notice. Sound familiar? Rifka and I were so blindly in love when we first met. Yet only a few months later, we couldn't see past the kogel. We knew that something needed to change in this relationship for it to work, but we had absolutely no clue what it was. We believed we were soulmates, but we didn't think things would be this hard. Just like the Jewish people, we embarked on this journey for something better, not to feel lost in the desert without anything to eat or drink. We eventually came to the realization that anything important in life requires work, especially a marriage. And all because it started off like a fairy tale doesn't mean that happily ever after happens on autopilot. We decided to get help, a decision that forever changed the course of our marriage and our lives. Divine Providence led us to the hands of a skilled imago relationship therapist who taught us a transformative process that allowed us to feel safe, communicate, and connect in a way in which we never had before. Through a structured format in which one person shares and the other listens by reflecting back instead of reacting or responding, we were able to stop the defensiveness that plagued our marriage and to really listen and have compassion for each other. This safe and calmer way of relating allowed us to see our conflict from a deeper perspective. No longer did we need to react because we realized it wasn't really about the kugel, but about something much bigger that was getting triggered. We began to see our conflict as the embodiment of the Azer Kinegdo, and that the frustration that we felt towards the other was really an invitation for the other to grow. I realized that my need for structure and a path in life had deep roots. I had a lot of freedom growing up, which was really great. Yet there was a part of me that needed more structure to feel more secure. Ever since I was a little boy, I sought to impose structure where it didn't exist. So when my need to do things a certain way felt challenged by my wife, it touched a raw nerve. Similarly, my wife's visceral reaction to my need for order reminded her of her childhood home, where as a little girl, she was expected to sit at her Shabbos table for hours on end. Coupled with her parents' divorce and a feminist mom who resented male privilege, my request felt oppressive. Everything had now made sense. All of the pain that we had experienced was for a purpose. This seemingly abrupt transition from the romantic stage to the power struggle was actually the way things were supposed to be. And the good news was that once we realized this and used this as a vehicle for transformation, we were able to create a much more profound connection than we had in the first place. Azer Kinegdo. The Torah has as its foundational model for couplehood the idea that conflict is built into it. But not just random conflict and meaningless struggle, but divine conflict with a laser focus, with a purpose, so that each individual in the relationship address and heal the exact wounds that need healing. To truly cleave to one's spouse and become one, become whole. This was a lesson of my marriage as well, and that of all couples, that we were meant to go through this cycle from romance and courtship to power struggle and conflict. 
Yet the mistake is to see this conflict as a sign that you made the wrong choice, to see it as a reason to leave. In truth, this conflict is merely the difficult stage through which we achieve true healing and move on to real and powerful intimacy with our whole healed selves and our healed partners. Thank you.